Good morning and welcome to this webinar called Preparation Technology for High Quality Molding Sand presented by IREC Machines. Um, this morning I will be your host in this webinar. My name is Luis Salazar and we will be um, checking all this technology that we have for high quality molding sand. So this is the agenda for this morning. We're going to take a, uh, talk a little bit about um, the IREC company, uh, how uh, how it started and what's our, our mission. We're going to see also about the process for sand preparation. And we're going to talk a little bit about the EVAC therm process. And finally, we're going to talk a little bit about process control for the molding sand preparation. Let's uh, start with this. Um, just a couple of notes. At the end of the webinar, uh, we're going to handle a Q and questions and answer um, session. So if you want to start, uh, if you see something that uh, got you some doubts or they want to, or you want to do some some questions, you can chat. You can write them in the chat box that you have on your right right side, and uh, we will be reading those at the end of the session and I will try to answer the, the most of them as, uh, as capable as I'm, I'm, I'm able to. So let's just start with the introduction of the company. So Machine Fabric Gustav Eirik was founded in 1863. Originally it was a mill workshop, but it has been developed since then over the years and it's now grown into a group of companies acting worldwide. This is a map of all the offices that we have around the world. We have the Chicago office where we are handling this uh, webinar. Uh, we have the Sao Paulo um, office in that it's handling all the South America. And we have some presence also in Asia with Tokyo, Seoul, Beijing, uh, in India, in Mumbai. Uh, we have uh, facilities also in Australia, in South Africa, and of course the uh, headquarters in Hartheim, Germany. This is our um, office here in Gurney, Illinois, and we have around 93 employees. And you can see that's on the left side. It's our uh, floor uh, floor shop uh, where where we can where we build most of the of the mixers that we produce. Also, we have another uh, division where we make uh, sanitary blenders and mixers for the for the sanitary applications and in another in another division. What do we do in iRig machines? Well, we want to think ourselves as a one-stop solution for all your needs. We make machines, systems engineering, feeding and weighing technology, control systems, engineering process control systems. We also do the installation, commissioning of, of our equipment, staff training, customer service worldwide. Uh, we have some uh, spare part supply. Uh, we also have consulting and engineering on different applications. Now, let's start with talking a little bit about sand preparation for the foundry industry. In order to talk a little bit more, and we all so we we all be in the same page, we're going to talk about the preparation process, the IREC mixing principle. The mixing process, it's made by three components on, inside our mixer. One of them is a rotation tool that it's, uh, it's, it's in, it's, it helps to ensure the required mixing intensity and high energy input. That's the tool that it's going to make most of the mixing process of the sand. But also we have a rotating pan transport that its uh, main function is to transport the molding sand inside the mixer. That, that way the, the sand will be uh, moved to the, to the rotatum uh, tool that we see here. And at the end also, we have the third component, which is a bottom and wall scraper. This is for additional agitation of the material flow and also to help avoiding the, the uh, making, uh, sticking the sand to the, to the bottom of the, of the pan or to the sides. 
So in, in basically with those three components working uh, together, we don't have any uh, dead spaces inside the mixer. All the sun gets in contact with our rotating tool here in one part, in one rotation of the pan. That helps us to be more uh, intensive mixing and being able to disperse the water and help the bentonite to be activated faster. Now we're going to be able to see a video of the how the how these part, three parts work together. You have the rotating um, tool there. You see how the pan starts rotating. And another function of the wall and bottom scraper is uh, to help discharge. As you can see, the the bottom distance, the bottom scraper has this curve that actually points toward the discharge gate. So that helps us to discharge the mixer very fast in around 30 seconds. What are the effects of this of these uh, three parts coming together? Well, we have a perfect homogenization of all basic materials. In this case, we're talking about the sand, the bentonite, in some cases also about the, the coal and the carbon black that we use, and the water. Um, a complete and even distribution of the added water, because as I said it, the, all the material is, is, is moving into the, into the mixer, so all the water is being dispersed into the, into the, into the sand. And also, once we have the water inside the mixer, we have an intensive wet mixing phase, which uh, can help us due to the, to the speed of the rotor that can be increased, that help us to move the water and uh, the water and the bentonite get together. So it will be the, the, the activation of the bentonite and distribution of the bentonite uh, around the, the sand grains is more uh, even and it's, it's better. So what's the advantages of using this technology? Well, we have more homogeneity to, thanks to the high mixing quality, as again, we're putting more energy going into the sand. With this, we reduce the scrap rates, we optimize the mixing periods, and we have an effective energy input. As I said, everything, uh, the, the rotor tool is putting energy into the, into the sand. And the more energy we have onto the sand, the more, the more, uh, the best, uh, quality we get from the mixing. This is a planned concept of how, uh, how a uh, sand preparation system will work in a foundry. So we have, this, um, we have the silos with the new sand, the bentonite. It can be bentonite or carbon in here or coal. And after this, it goes to a, sa a sand silos that goes on top of the mixer. Below the silos, you have the weighing system, which is this part that handles the weighing, very precise weighing of the additives and also the new sand. But also we have the water in a, in a water scale in order to be able to control the water addition in a more precise way. Then at, below that, you have, the, you have the mixer, in this case, in, it's an R28 and Below that, it, you have this. This is a rotating, uh, a rotating table, a feeding table. Most of the people ask, uh, ask us when they approach uh, to us for an engineering process is that, uh, do, uh, that we have a batch system, but their molding machines require more continuously uh, sand coming from, uh, to, the, to the molding machine. In order to avoid this um, um, or adapt this batch system, to the continuous uh, uh, molding machines, we use this. We use these rotating tables in order to use as a buffer to, to handle all the prepar preparated sand coming from the mixer in order to always have sand coming into the belts that feeds the molding machines. After that, in, and we're, we will be talking a little bit more about that later, we have these little unit called the 81. The 81 will help us to do some testing, some, some measurements on the prepared sand that can work in um, as a feedback loop with the mixer in order to control the moisture and bentonite content. Now, we're going to be able to see here an animation of the whole uh, mixing process. 
I would like to notice that this um, this video is available in our in our YouTube uh, channel of uh, Eric Machines or American Process Systems. That's our our uh, another division of the sanitary um, uh, blender, blenders and mixers. So you can go and find this animation completely in YouTube if you want to check it later. So we're going to start on the shakeout. Once we have the casting coming out, we have the we have this the sand, the hot sand coming, uh, being separated from the casting. You know that that sand is normally very hot and very dry after being in contact with the molten metal. After that, we go to the magnetic separation to take away all the metal pieces that can be the a little piece of the runners, risers that go, that goes with the sand. They're taken away from the from the sand with this uh, separation, this magnetic separation. That, of course, if you are pouring uh, iron iron or steel. Then we have this the screening and cooling where you have the sand cooler here. Uh, screen. Uh, this guy, so this is an octagonal rotation screen, and you have the the cyclone to collect the fines during the during the sand cooling. Another option is to have the same sand cooler but having a vibrating screening. In this case, it it helps us to to separate the sand and also the coarse sand coming out of the of, of the system. So that way you don't get contamination of this of the sand that we're going to be used for the mixing farther in the process after the cooling you have the storage of this return sand normally that's uh, these diverters on top of the silos helps to move the sand and keep the the temperature uh, on the on the silos being um, consistent and being more uniform on top of the mixing uh, Part we have the silos that I mentioned on the previous panel, uh, where you have the silos of the additives, normally bentonite, the new sand uh, addition, and the the coal or carbon. Below that you have these weight uh, scales where you accumulate all the additives, which has been, you know, as you see, transported from the silo to the weight scale. Below that, we have this big hopper holding the return sand. As you see here, we are adding the additives from the top of the, of the tower. Once we have the sand and the additives on, the, on, our, on our big hopper, we are discharging into the mixing. In here, we can see the inside of the mixer. We have the sand with the additives getting, getting filled out of the mixer. Once we have the mixer filled out, we closed, and we use that probe to go inside the sand and measure the moisture. That allows the system to know how much water needs to be added to the, to the sand to get the proper moisture at the content at the end. After that, we have the wet mixing phase where we have the dispersion of the water and activation of the bentonite and additives into the sand. Finally, we have the discharge of the sand into the into the rotating feeder or a hopper to go to the molding sand, to the molding machine, sorry. In here, we're going to see a little video of how the, the AT1 uh, works. It's a, this is a small device where you have the sample going through different station where you have the, compress, the compactability uh, and also the, the green strength test in here. After that, if it's needed, you can have a sand conditioner which can be installed in the belt that goes from the from the molding from the mixing machine to the molding to the molding machine. At the end, you have the sand is already in the right amount of moisture and ready to go into the molding and to the molding machine. These finally, these diverters are making a consistent level inside that hopper. And that's, as you see, it's a, it's a very educational animation of how the how the the return sand cycle works. Now we're going to see a little bit of the mixing cycle here. In this case, we're going to take a preparation cycle for an R28, which has a 4,000 liters, which is around 
around three three point eight tons per, per per batch size, operating at twenty six batches per hour with a throughput of one of one hundred and four cubic meters of sand preparated. Uh, so the first step is we're going to have the mixer feeding, which is going to take around 10 seconds. Then we have the homogenation of the sand and the additives in about seven seconds. Then, you, as you saw in the video, we have the moisture and temperature measurement, which takes around 10 seconds. Then uh, the water metering takes 12, uh, 12 seconds to add the water, the right amount of water to get the content uh, the, the moisture content at the end of the mixing. Then we have the wet mixing, which is the the, the biggest uh, time here. Where are mixing? We're mixing all the everything, the water and the additives into the sand, and we have the mixer discharge of 30 seconds. This giving us a total pro batch processing time of 137 seconds. So almost a, a little bit higher than two minutes. We're producing a batch of three tons. In this case, we have different different size of mixers as we're going to see uh, again a little bit farther. So, what are the advantages for our customers on this side? Well, our the availability of our system is around 98%. The intensive mixing is uh, is achieved due to the inclination and rotation of the mixing pan. As you remember, when we saw the parts of the mixing, that inclination helped us moving all the sand. Remember, there are no dead zones inside these mixers against other technologies. The rotating mixing tools and innovating scraper technology also helps on this intensive mixing. Also, we have this reprodu reproducible quality of molding material at the highest level. So we're, as I told you, uh, we are completing an even coating of each sand grain with the additives and the water. We have a more homogeneous and intensive distribution of the water, and we have an optimal disintegration of bentonite with the sand, which help us to be more to have more addition between those the sand grains, and therefore we're having a better a better properties of the sand inside our molding machines, especially if we use the sand uh, in a in a in a blow in a in a blow shot uh, molding machine. So this is our throughput rates of systems. We have the smallest, the smallest mixer that we make is a bit for producing between 1.6 and 175 tons per hour. And the biggest one we, we produce is the one that goes from 155 to, one, uh, to 164 tons per hour, which is the R33. So this is the range of uh, uh, capacities that we can provide to the foundries. If there's a foundry that requires more sand than this, well, we normally suggested to use two or three mixers in order to have uh, more consistent production. Now we're going to see more a little bit about the EPAC therm process. Remember, if you have some doubts or questions, you can write it in the chat box on your right and we will read it at the end of this webinar. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about the modern foundries. As you saw, as you know, the modern foundries uh, requires to produce complex geometries with optimized wall thicknesses. So especially in the, in the automotive industry, we are required to produce castings with, a, with, a, with a thinner walls and a, a more consistent radi radius inside, the, inside the, the castings and everything. So, it, that's, that requires a, a more high quality sand for produce those castings. Also, most of the new foundries work in a multi-shift operation, sometimes around the clock to produce castings. And most comply with contractual standards of quality management. And it, meet, it must meet high requirements on delivery and reliability, or as people in industry call it, just in time. So uh, with this in mind, we find um, a couple of, of uh, points that are point uh, that are directing our attention to this uh, new process. One of them is the safe operation under variable climatic conditions. We have uh, cooled homogeneously of 42 uh, centigrades, which are around 100 and 
13 uh, Fahrenheit. We have a reduction of emission or exhausted air re, uh, requirements in the, into the new foundries. Also an economical consumption of raw materials and energy. Once the raw materials are getting, are getting the same price in around the world, we are, we are now to be, uh, we're demanded to be more uh, efficient using those same raw materials and energy. With this in mind, we uh, started to see uh, an opportunity for our vacuum technology. The vacuum technology is used in many industries like freezing drying sublimation. We are a low temperature vacuum for drying sensitive materials, uh, casting and recasting of high purity metals, bubble free casting of some resins. So the vacuum has many applications. And well, we came with the idea of using it for cooling of the hot molding sand using the vacuum technology. A little bit of what you see on the right side, we have the mixer and that we're going to take out the, the energy from the sand using the vacuum, um, the vacuum properties. Now let's, let's talk a little bit about the, 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 the cooling of the sand. So this is a, this is a graph that shows that after, after um, some sand cycles, especially in the three shift operation uh, foundries, we have a distribution of very hot sand, which is more than the 50% of the, of the sand is between 60 and 80 uh, centigrades. And most uh, then it, the next, uh, uh, the next uh, sizes, as you can say, is the 25% of the sand is between 80 and 100. So as you see, we're, we will like to be around 42, uh, 42 centigrades. So in order to do that, we need to cool the sand. After using our technology, we see that 85, 82% of the, of the sand is between 35 and 42 uh, centigrades, and uh, less than 15% 15, 15 of the sand is lower than 35. As you know, we want to be using cooler sand before going into the molding machines, because if we don't do that, we have this, we can get this, this uh, problems. We have damage in our molding equipment due to the high temperature of sand going into the, into the molding machines. The deterioration of the molding sand strength, the hotter the sand it is, the, the faster we are losing that water content into the sand, into the molding as a material, into the sand. And therefore we're, we can get some uh, defects in the castings like sand wash and, and inclusions into the castings due to that. Also, we have, the, as, as I mentioned, variable properties of the mold affecting the quality of the cast iron. So we have this sand that goes into the first molds that it's, it's in good quality and good, in good preparations. But if it's hotter the sand, the last, the last um, molds in that, in that batch of sand will get different properties than the first one giving us re results in more higher scrap, scrap rate due to sand wash and other inclusions into the castings. So what does evocter mean? Well, it comes from IREC vacuum thermal process technology, which means we're going to have all the steps into one machine. We will be able to cool the sand, prepare the sand and mixing all in the same mixer, all in the same unit. So how do we do this? Well, we use the vaporization, vaporization heat of water, which is used to cool down the molding sand. So there's a, relation, a thermodynamic relationship between the pressure and temperature of the liquids. So when we lower the pressure, the water evaporates at lower temperature. Once we have this phase transition from water to liquid, we are moving energy away from the sand due to this, to, to this, to this uh, evaporation of water. And that way, at the end of this process, we have a cooling down of the molding sand in the same, in the same mixer. So what we do in this uh, process is that inside the mixer, we're going to lower the pressure to this point, which is 74 millibars. And when, when we reach this point, 
the water will boil at for around 40, 40 degrees Celsius, taking away all that excess of heat coming from the hot sand will take it will be taken out from the with the water and lowering the temperature to those nice 40 degrees before going into the molding machine. So what do we do? Well, first of all, we are going to fill the mixer as you saw in the video. And then we're going to, the process control is going to take the measurements as you saw, and it's going to add water into the mixing. After that, once we have that water adding and mixed, as you saw in the first video, we're going to use a 70 seconds vacuum mixing time in order to take away that that uh, that that excess of water and temperature from the sand going into the into the into the condenser. Now, in the next part in this condenser, we're going to take that steam, we're going to cool it down to make it water again, and in order to have this this material this uh, this water coming back into the system. So as you see, it's a, it's a closed system that can be, that has uh, other benefits. One of them is that the valuable finds extracted with the steam are washed out back in, in the condenser and it can be reused in the return sand. As you remember, we have a water scale that will get this, this condensed water from the condenser with all these finds and uh, sand finds and sometimes bentonite and it will be added back into the system. That way we're not losing those fines that normally will go into the into the into our dust collector having high, using most more more air to be extracting those fines and we will be losing some valuable some valuable um, materials there. Then we have this cooling water circuit. So this this heat uh, that we extract from the sand it's released into the atmosphere through a ex uh, heat exchanger that way the system it's only uh, it's only producing uh, uh, cooling water uh, vapor going into the into the atmosphere which is much uh, environmentally friendly than other than the traditional mixing sites so okay now we have the mixing the vacuum mixing so how it affects the mixing time. Well, in this case, we have an example of preparation for 24 batches per, per hour and 168 cubic meters per hour of sand. In this case, we're going to have the mixer feeding of 15 seconds, an homogenization of five seconds, moisture and temperature measuring of 10 seconds, water metering of 20 seconds, water mixing, wet mixing of five seconds, and then we have this vacuum mixing. So we're only adding this 70 seconds here. The discharge is the same, 30. So we're getting a, a total processing time of 155 seconds. As you see, there's no some the, there's not a big difference between the 137 that we have in the traditional mixing cycle, or the 155 seconds in the evacotherm mixing cycle. There's another great benefit in using the evoctherm technology. One of them is the bentonite preparation. I'm going to explain a little bit what we say here, but uh, we'll explain later about what's going on. So what we do, as remember, is that we're taking, uh, we're we're making uh, some gas, some molecules gas in the generated vacuum. So we are taking out the we're taking out the air. The the, the water will vaporize and will be dispersed in steam. Remember, we're going to take out the water but through the uh, steam uh, uh, preparation through to the, due to the vacuum. Then also during the vacuum mixing, the bentonite layers are opening up. So they're, they're open, this, these layers, they're opening, leaving these spaces between the layers. And the finely dispersed water that it's in the, in the, inside the mixer, will go into those spaces between the, bind, the bentonite um, molecules, well, the layers of the, of, the, of the bentonite, and will go inside. 
once we take out the vacuum or we put air back into the into the mixing those layers will close again because we have the we have the the regular pressure on on them and the water will be inside the bentonite layers that will help us to do the activation of the bentonite within the 70 seconds of the mixing of the vacuum mixing so this is we are we're activating the bentonite much more quickly so if we do if we're doing this we will not be we will not need those uh, th that uh, sand resting into the into the silos to to uh, to help the bentonite to be activated in into the sand in order to have a more a more cohesive uh, uh, property of the sand we don't need that with using evac term so if we don't using that that extra storage uh, uh, space we can use 25 percent less return sand storage well because we don't we don't need that time what is that storage time in in of the sand to activate the bentonite so as you can see here we have a comparison of the traditional system versus an evac term system as you see we don't have the cooling sand the cooling system which is also a requirement of maintenance parts time going into the cooling into the sand coolers and we don't have this extra silo so it's a more compact system producing better results but also the evac therm helps to re relieve the environment because we don't use we don't use the the air volumes uh, the the extracting volumes that requires in the traditional mixing size uh, mixing uh, uh, process so this is an example where we are producing 300 tons per hour of molding sand normally we we will be using 220,000 cubic meters per hour of extracted air cooling during vacuum we only use 100,000 so that means that we have le le uh, less uh, less uh, extraction systems so we're using less energy and and smaller equipment also remember that we are reusing valuable sustenance in the in the molding materials like the fines and this the bentonites and other on, on other fines other materials these are extracted during the vapor, as I'm telling you, during the cooling process, it goes to the condenser and returning through the water scale. So we are saving some money here with the reusable of this valuable substance. We have reduced cost for disposing filter dust because we're going to have less filter dust. We are going to, we are going to have to use less um, services of taking that filter dust outside of our, our, of our foundries. And at the end, also we're reducing the emissions, which is a significant increase of environmental compatibility. That help us to to keep the the, the foundries in within this new uh, regulatory uh, uh, compliance to the to the to the to these new rules of uh, not no emissions to the atmosphere. So a little summary of the facts. Uh, of this uh, using this vacuum technology uh, well we have we, we use the hot return the return sands uh, with a moisture it's very low uh, coming back into the system we are we are using the we are activating the, the bentonite and cooling everything in 70 seconds the storage period of the return sand is totally uh, taken out of the system and we don't need those. Uh, we don't have those those uh, the rat holing into the silos. This is the sizes of mixers we produce using vacuum technology. So the smaller one is 70 tons per hour, and the biggest one we have is 151 tons per hour. Again, if a customer needs more more sand production, we can recommend the use of uh, a twin system of mixers in order to to fulfill the the sound preparation now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, about process control we have this very good technology of preparing sand but what happens after that what what uh, 
how do we control this this pro this process in order to be more efficient and more uh, more economic um, uh, more economic uh, savings in giving to our, our process. Well, we're going to use uh, a process control in four levels or four steps. The first one is going to be a moisture detection inside the mixer. Uh, we already saw a little bit of that in the video where you see that, that sand probe going into the mixer, having the moisture content getting into the mixer that help us in the first level to control the, the sand. If we want to go farther, we use uh, the compactability control in the Quali Master 81. Remember the little uh, unit that it's after the mixing? Well, that's going to be able to take a sample and measure the compactability. Then we're going to have in the same, in, in the same, in the next level, in the same unit, we're going to have the shear strength control. The compactability part of the 81 will help us to control and monitor the, mo the moisture content in our sand. Remember that the compactability is a direct correlation of the sand of the of the moisture content in the sand. The shear strength is going to help us to control the bentonite content into into the mixer in order to be more economic efficient of using of the of the of these raw materials. And, at, and the, the final level, most complete system that we can have for the process control is preventing of the molding sand control with the sand expert. We're going to use a software that will take all the information from this and it will combine them into a whole process control from the beginning of the, of the, of the, molding, uh, of the molding sand coming into the mixer all the way to the end and it will keep that uh, the, all the sand properties in check. So let's go a little bit about at each level. We're going to talk a lot about the moisture measurement. So as you see, as, as you see here on the picture on the right, you see the moisture probe going into the mixer. Um, this based on a calibration curve, the signal will give us a uh, it will give us a very accurate uh, measurement of the sand before uh, going into the mixing process. This method uh, guarantees a constant and precise moisture content in the molding sand. Adjustment is easily possible via the process visualization system. So we will be able to see this into the into the PLC of our of our uh, mixer. And we will be able to have some measurements and do, doing some some quality control of the water of the water content. Now let's talk a little bit about the the eighty one this uh, this uh, new system um, that the new version of the Quality Master eighty one is uh, it has all these five tests that it can it can make. Sorry, let's have one more. We have the compactability, spring back, the formability, and permeability. Sorry, I have this. I put this back again. So we have this this test coming into the eighty one, and inside the 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 sand the the sand uh, testing unit, we have three samples taken from each batch. This will be able to evaluate it statistically, and we will be able to have more information, more precise information of each batch coming out of this of the of the mixer now we're going to be able to see a little bit of uh the animation and i will explain more in detail so we have the sand collecting part going into this cil uh, sample cylinder then moves to the next station this is a rotating table moves into the next station and it will in this part, it will push the, sa the sample and measure the compactability. In the next one, we're going to measure the spring, the the, the shear strength of the molding sand. In the new versions, we will have another station in here that will measure the the permeability of the sand, and what the and a more precise. A cylinder in in this station that not only measures the compactability but also the spring back and the formability of the sand. 
So the, the, the next level is the compatibility control of the quality master. So in this one, we will have a compensation of unavailable variations of the molding sign by correcting of the elevation of the water. Again, as I told you before, the compactability is a, is a direct uh, relationship between the, the moisture content of the sand and the compactability. So in, if we know the, the, moisture, the moisture content from the level one and the compactability on the level two, we will be able to have a more a more exact adjustment of the mixer, and therefore uh, we will be able to keep it in more, more control throughout the, the the shift of the of the foundries. Be what what are the advantages of taking the samples directly after the mixer? This is another um, question that all the, that we get from the customers is because there are other technologies outside and in, 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 on, on the market that it, they measure inside the mixer. Well, the advantages of that is that we can take three samples per batch. So that makes us, we have the more reliability process. We have a correction already in the next batch because since we're making the correction of the, of the outside the mixer, we can, we can have the correction for the next batch and therefore we don't need a readjustment in the mixer which will give us a batch processing times more controlled and be more consistent we have a more allocation of measured measured values to specific batches quality assurance there because we're going to be able to have each specific value for each batch it doesn't matter uh, where if it's it's in the morning or in the afternoon we're going to have a traceability of those of, of those batches and those quality of this of those properties of the sand to every batch and we're going to have a minimum batch processing time is achieved to maximum mixing, mixing efficiency but now we're going to the next level which is we're already having control of the moisture content but what about what about the bentonite content well if we have the shear strength measurement uh, of the previously compacted samples again we are measuring the shear strength in the third in the third uh, station in here we're going to have a correction of the additive fitting so we have moisture content and with the shear uh, with the shear strength uh, testing we're going to be able to co to correct the the additive in order to be more efficient and using only the amount of additive needed to, con to keep the sand between the properties that we want in, 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 in getting into the molding machines. And finally, we can get to the final level, the level four, which is getting gathering all this information and we're pouring this information into the software solution we call Sand Expert. In this case, we are going to be able to calculate formulas for a specific sand properties. So we will be able to see, to tell the, the system, okay, we need a sand property of, of, of this compactability and this, this uh, spring back for our molding machine, which is, we know it's better, the best uh, parameters for a specific casting. Therefore, the sand system will be able to correct the water and bentonite addition to produce that specific sand grave for each specific castings. So we will be able to use all the all the the, the levels, all, all the the feedback uh, coming from all the the previous levels to achieve a more high quality sand. That's between, that's everything about process control. Um, I want just want to know the to let you know that we have also a test center. In our offices in Gurney, we have a test center where we can actually do some testing with your sand, and we will be able to do some, some studies there. So we will be able to do some operational support and advice. We will be able to perform tests, elaboration solutions for new, new products. Um, one of the examples is a, using this, this uh, test lab, we can use it to test different raw materials. Let's say that you change the bentonite, your bentonite supplier, or a different carbon, or a different, uh, or a different uh, size of, of, of sand, or, or different uh, sand uh, coming from a different uh, source. Then we will be able to test that for you 
in order to, to, to tell you which are the best uh, parameters for, for your process. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for joining us on this webinar of achieving high quality sand through mixing preparation. Now we are going to be open for questions and answers. Uh, there you have my email address and my phone if you want to contact me. So now we open for questions for answering.